have you ever been rejected? you know the rejection that I am talking about, right? The one that knocked your ass down a few pegs and it took you a minute to recover. Um, the rejection from that guy who, you know, you had already decided to marry in your mind. Um, the rejection from the guy that wasn't even that cute. Um, we all have, right? But what if I told you that rejection was actually a good thing? Would you believe me? Um, if you don't, I would say it's probably worth taking a listen to this episode because I'm going to show you how to turn a rejection into your superpower. But before we do, um, let me introduce myself. My name is Danny. Um, and I am a love and self-esteem coach that works with the, uh, LGBTQ plus community, primarily gay and bisexual men. And you are tuning into the deep penetration podcast season three. Um, so welcome. Um, only thing that I ask is that you subscribe to the podcast and my other platforms, which helps me to continue to do what I love to do, which is connect with you guys. Um, and I will provide you with all the information that you need in the description of this episode. So please make sure that you are taking a look. All right. So let me paint a picture for you, right? It is 2010. I am newly single. I had just ended things with my girlfriend at the time because I came out to her as bisexual and needed to figure out myself. Um, I was working as a store supervisor um, at the time at American Eagle and had, honestly, I had the best crew. It was like the best time um, of my life. It was probably the best retail experience I have ever had. And if you talk to anybody who was on the team at that time, they would probably tell you the exact same thing. We would occasionally have get togethers. Um, and at one of these get togethers, um, a friend, uh, Mm, what I say, a friend, uh, let's just put it this way, a coworker of mine um, brought one of her friends along with her. And his name is Felipe. Um, I say Felipe because he's still alive, um, but it's something that happened in the past. But anyways, listen, <laughs> when I tell you um, I immediately had a crush on this man. I immediately had a crush on this man. He was tall. He was dark. He was handsome. Um, I mean, his name was Felipe for Christ's sakes. I mean, that's a pretty sexy name. Um, so I introduced myself and we started to hang out, right? We went on a few dates. Um, we got intimate, blah, 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 blah. You know the story, right? And after about a month, of getting to know each other, he basically let me know that he was not interested in me. And that was that. He left, he disappeared, he ghosted me. And that was my first real experience with rejection as an openly bisexual man. And let me tell you, ouch, that shit hurt. And here's the thing, I could easily sit here and play the smallest little violin for myself. But the reality is rejection is a universal experience. Every single person experiences rejection. Um, I am not the first person and I will most definitely not be the last person to experience rejection. And unfortunately, neither will you, right? We've all had our fair share of rejection and I would be, it would be really interesting um, to hear what your stories are, right? Because I think that that's a big part of this as well. I think in podcasts, it's so easy to kind of just assume that we're going to be talking the entire time, which I mean, obviously I am, but I want to know your story. I want to know about you. I want to know what your experiences with rejection are um, and how that impacted you and how that affected you, right? So let me know, leave me a comment. Let me know what your experiences with rejection are. Um, and if you're not comfortable with sharing your experience on a public platform like this, I will provide you with my email in the description box down below as well. Um, and you can send me a, an email or a direct message and let me know. Um, but again, if you are super comfortable with it, make sure that you are leaving me a comment and letting me know what your experience with rejection is like. So the truth here is we all get rejected, right? And I know I've said this a million times, um, but 
at some point, the question becomes, how do you not allow it to impact you negatively, right? How do you not allow it to jade you? So first, I think we have to define what rejection actually is. And in the context of personal relationships, essentially rejection can be experienced when someone is not interested in pursuing you romantically or forming an intimate connection with you, right? Or when a certain social circle excludes you. The emotional impact of rejection can range from from feelings of of disappointment and sadness to to more intense emotional responses honestly just depending on the circumstances and your emotional resilience that's that's going to be a big part here um and i wish that i can tell you that you will never have to experience this but i would be lying everybody experiences it at some point or another especially as queer men and if you don't believe me then here are a few scenarios and tell me if any of these resonate with you right so dating app rejections um coming out rejection experiencing any form of biphobia being excluded from a social circle or event internalized homophobia, non-acceptance by a faith-based community, job discrimination or favoritism, right? All of these um, are a form of rejection in some way, right? Rejection in any of these areas can have a negative impact on your mental and your emotional well-being. Trust me, I, I've experienced it myself, that that deep feeling of, of despair, the the questioning of yourself and, and whether you're good enough. And I'm sure you're asking at this point how any of this can be a good thing. And the reason I say that is because it gives you the insight into your emotions and your reactions. We come to know ourselves through our interactions with other people, which means if you allow yourself to be reflective, if you allow yourself to really sit back and think in those moments and differentiate what factual, what is factual and what isn't, it can help you to build self-confidence. It can help you gain a, a deeper appreciation for yourself, right? Um, allowing you to be more empathetic to those people around you, allowing you to be more empathetic to other people because you know what it feels like to have that experience and to be rejected. It helps you to own your mistakes and hand over theirs, right? I'm gonna repeat that. It helps you to own your mistakes and hand over the ones that are not yours to them, to that person, right? It helps you break the perpetual cycle um, within the community of using emotional immaturity or Im using emotionally immature tactics to hurt people. It can become your superpower. Um, side note, having a depth of understanding and confidence is sexy as fuck. I'm just saying. That is definitely something that I look for in a partner and somebody that I am dating is your ability to be reflective, to have a deeper understanding and to be able to go further with it, right? So how do you achieve this? I think the best way of achieving this is by reframing rejection. It is completely normal to feel a to feel slighted or or take it personally when someone rejects you, but remember, it's not a reflection of your worth. It's very easy to think that it is. So let's reframe this together, right? So the first thing is you got to identify external factors. Take a moment to consider if external circumstances might be a factor here, right? Sometimes, sometimes it's a timing thing. Sometimes it's a compatibility thing, or it's a situation that's beyond your control. The second thing here is you have to separate your worth from the outcome. You are valuable no matter what. Rejection does not diminish your worth. It's more about the compatibility factor here, right? Between you and the circumstance or the person. The third thing here is reflect on compatibility. Not every connection or opportunity is meant to be, and that's okay. The fourth thing here is you got to focus on personal growth. 
Look at rejection as a chance to grow and learn more about yourself. What can you take away from this experience to enhance future interactions and relationships with other people or the person who's right for you, right? Let me give you an example of a scenario that I come across frequently and have experienced myself, right? So internalized thought. They rejected me. They must not be attracted to me. Um, or interested in me in any way. Here's the reframed thought. Maybe our interests or relationship goals didn't align. And that's okay. It's not a reflection of my worth, but it's actually an opportunity to find someone whose values and interests better match mine. See, isn't that, I mean, come on. Isn't that like such a, it's, it's, it's a better way of looking at it. It's, it's, it just feels better when you say it, right? I want you to, I actually want you to pause and reverse a little bit, rewind, reverse, rewind, and say that out loud to yourself, right? Say it out loud. That's the exercise here, right? And I want you to feel the difference between saying that and saying it's my fault. I'm not attractive. They're not interested in me. I'm not worthy. I'm never going to find love. Men are shit. I fucking hate dating. Like, reframe your mindset. That is a really important part of A, dealing with rejection, and B, being able to navigate the dating world in general. So remember, this takes practice, and it's okay to feel the way that you do. But over time, shifting your mindset like this can help you navigate rejection with a more positive outlook. I have had countless experiences where I have been rejected. I know you're probably surprised that I've been rejected before. Um, I'm just kidding. (laughs) I have totally been rejected, which is why I'm making that joke. Um, And initially, tough pill to swallow, a thousand percent, um, because... There is a part of us that is seeking validation from that person. There is a part of us that is hoping that they choose us. And a lot of that comes from the fact that we have not been choosing ourselves for a really long time. Um, And the need for that external validation comes from us not being able to validate ourselves um, internally be comfortable enough with ourselves, be confident in who we are and what we want and what we expect, right? And it took me a minute to to reframe my mindset around rejection. And what I came to realize and the reason why I created this episode was that accepting rejection as a good thing released me from the pressure of needing to live up to somebody else's expectations. Um, Play that again for yourself, because I think it's really important to, to think about. It released me from other people's expectations, because at the end of the day, I knew my worth. I knew what I was looking for. And I knew that that person's rejection of me was a them thing. Now, I'm not saying that in the sense of being conceited or self-centered or any of those things, because we all have types. There's compatibility, there's chemistry, there's all of those things. And just because they aren't choosing me doesn't mean that there's something wrong with them. It doesn't mean that they can't obviously see beauty. Um, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Again, no, what I mean is, That doesn't mean there's something wrong with them on a fundamental level, right? That doesn't mean that they are flawed. What tells me that person is struggling is the way in which the rejection occurs, the way in which they handle that rejection. And usually that is the part that hurts the most, right? Because most people will ghost, most people will be passive aggressive, most people will be rude. But if you have somebody who is confident in themselves 
and grounded in who they are as a person, they are not going to have an issue with rejecting you in a healthy way by saying, hey, look, this is just not working out. I don't find that we are compatible. I think you're an incredible person. I think that you're amazing. And I think that you have beautiful qualities to you, but I just don't see this going long term. That rejection hurts a little bit less. Doesn't mean that it doesn't hurt and it doesn't sing, but it doesn't hurt as badly as people who reject you that are emotionally immature. And again, that speaks volumes about them and not you. So don't think that you are the problem here, but also make sure that you're reflecting on that situation. You're taking accountability for anything that you may have done um, that may have resulted in that person not feeling comfortable or whatever the case may be. And if you don't find anything, then look, rest easy, lay your head on that pillow at night and know that it wasn't you. You're fine, right? But rejection can actually be your superpower. Keep that in mind. I hope you guys found this episode to be useful, to be helpful. Um, if you stuck around all the way to the end, congratulations. Thank you so much for not ghosting me midway through the episode. Um, anyways, I'll leave you guys the information in the description down below um, for all my other social media platforms so you can continue to watch my shit. I think it's good stuff. I hope you do too. Anyways, I will see you in the next episode and hope you guys have an amazing day.